we are in Sydney now. The center of the city is right behind us. There is the Sydney Bridge over to the left. It's also commonly called the Harbour Bridge. The city bay and one of the most famous opera houses of all time is right behind us. The construction of the opera house began in 1959. A Danish architect started it first, yet it was finished by an Australian architect in 1973. It took many years to complete the construction, and everyone around the world recognizes the opera house as the official symbol of the city of Sydney. We are starting out our day in Sydney with a helicopter tour. We got to the airport early in the morning while the sun was just starting to rise. We're ready for our helicopter tour. We'll be able to see Sydney from the sky now. I'm really excited. Would you like to join me now? Come on then. We are looking at Sydney from the top now. The weather is beautiful today and the sun is just on the horizon. The city center is right in front of us and it's a fantastic view at this time of day. We're getting closer to the Sydney Bridge. Here's another idea. If you're courageous enough, you can stand on top of the Harbour Bridge and watch the beautiful sunrise and city skyline from there. <laughs> that must be interesting too. We're now approaching the center of Sydney. That is the tallest building in the city, the Sydney Tower. As you can see, the city center has lots of skyscrapers. It's a bustling metropolis where the country does business seven days a week. And that is the Olympic Stadium of Sydney. The ocean reaches its arms into the city, making Sydney look all the more beautiful. The city has miles of pristine beaches and dozens of bays and ports that accommodate all kinds of seafaring crafts. All the high-rise buildings are located downtown. Outside of downtown, most of the buildings are like townhouses. The city is very well planned out and organized, with the comforts of its citizens in mind. This area of the city has been zoned to prohibit large structures. As opposed to downtown, here you will see lots of greenery. Trees and flowers are seen almost everywhere. Sydney was the first city in Australia in which the Europeans settled. It was founded in 1788 and has a population of 4 million making it the biggest city in Australia. If you come to Sydney, you should visit one of the world's most diverse aquariums, the Sydney Aquarium. Here, you can find more than 5,000 different species. If you're interested in ocean life, this place will be like heaven. Here, you can see some huge sharks. This tunnel is made of very thick glass, so don't worry, you can walk safely here. Walking in this glass tunnel is so amazing. You almost feel as if you're swimming in a mysterious ocean among all these beautiful creatures. It really is an incredible experience and a sight to behold. Walking in this giant aquarium, listening to the music, you feel like you're in a different world. This place is home to the largest shark on the planet, the whale shark. There are more than 11,000 creatures in this aquarium. It's almost 
almost impossible to see everything in a short visit. You need to have plenty of time here. I honestly don't want to leave this magical place, and upon a visit to Sydney, I strongly recommend it. As if we're traveling in time, here we feel like we're in the 19th century. The houses and people look different. The clothes, the tools they use, the transportation, and the language, everything looks very different here. The first settlement of this town was due to the gold. Now, it functions as a great tourist attraction. After the gold mines were discovered here in 1851, the rush was on. This small and humble town then became a rich and booming one. If you visit this town, you'll find it in the same condition it was then, with people imitating life here as if it were the 1850s. Hang on, hang on. Don't you own those pottery? Well, it looks like we found an authentic policeman from that time. What's your name? My name's Nathan. Nathan? Police officer Nathan still has his uniform from that time. Not only his uniform, but he has the weapons they would have used, like a sword that you see here, and handcuffs. And police would then use these handcuffs to lock up criminals, and then they would take them off to jail. Now they also would use a club, and they would carry a club like this for extra protection. With all these characters from the past surrounding us, they make history come alive. Good luck then, Nathan. This nostalgic town was turned into a tourist attraction in 1970. Some 300 people are employed in this huge tourist attraction. They have shows here almost every day. But they don't make these shows for profit. They use all the money that they make at the shows to improve things around here. Many people from different cities like to come here to visit. Every year, some 500,000 people visit this attraction. 75% of them being visitors from Australia, while 25% of them come from other countries around the world. When gold was discovered here, thousands of people moved to this area. So the place literally turned into a gold town overnight. They used shovels and sieves, much like these, to find gold. And just like the prospectors of old, tourists who come here can also search for gold themselves. Every year, small pieces of gold and gold dust are thrown into the river, all amounting to about $25,000. They literally throw $25,000 into the water. All the tourists that come here are hoping to find gold pieces. This is what makes this town still pretty exciting. Now I'm going to try to find some gold too, so let's see if I strike it rich or not. It's impossible not to be amazed when you see how Australians created projects to keep their history alive, much like the place we are in today. All the while visiting this town, you'll wish that this historical dream wouldn't end. If only every culture on this earth would pay this much attention to their history and create such an entertaining way of sharing it with others. The Ballarat region of Victoria State is a must for anyone who's touring Australia. This country is really worth visiting, beautiful and inspiring.